Well, hey, it's your pal Keith from Groups.com uh, here to talk about more floppy stuff. I'm sorry it's taken me forever to make more videos about floppy. And of course, videos are my favorite form of documentation, even though the product is very well documented inside of its various interfaces and actions and stuff like that. Um, what we need to talk about today, we talked about the basics of browser storage in my first videos. Um, but let's now look at some of the custom state type actions that Flappy has, or features and actions that go with them. And these you can use like build lists and manipulate lists. And um, there, there's a lot of actions that uh, there's actually not much to talk about. It's like explore them and see what they do. They basically say what they do like right on the tin. Um, when you look at one of these actions, um, there's you know a full description of what they do um and if you're familiar with list shifter you'll be familiar with many of these things but there's some uh, nifty add-ons and stuff like that so let's get into it um i have a little project here that's not floppy eyes yet this is kind of um this is the bubble way of doing things let me just boop, move, make my make my ugly face a little smaller for you don't don't need to be like right up in your grill, do I? Um, so this is a little project, right? And, th and this is a common design pattern in Bubble um, where you might have like, you've got some list of things that maybe came from a search or whatever, and you want to put certain of them in, in another list, right? So, you know, scenario, this is the artificial scenario. This is with my, my data type that I call favorite things that are just these silly little objects some of them have funny names because i'm funny um and other ones just have auto generated names and and i have a like sixteen thousand of them uh in my database in this particular project and I, I use them to test various performance things um but the scenario here is like say you're building a vacation rental site which is something that i've done uh in in bubble and you know you'd have like a list of amenities right and so now like the, the the owner user the person who's advertising a property we're saying hey uh tell us what you know features your property has right we're going to put them onto a list that will then go on to some object like the you know maybe it's the the the, the property description or you know something like that right um, or if it's a dating site, right, it might actually go on the user. It's like, okay, these are things that I like. And that's sort of what fave things are, right? Like, so like I, if I'm into rich Corinthian leather, you know, I might want to put that on my, my own personal list of favorite things I'm highlighting over here. Right. And so I can click this button and now rich Corinthian leather is in my list of favorite things. Let's see. What else do I like? Um, oh, I like pork juice. Yep. Uh, let's see, I like face computers. And you can see what's happening here, right, is these these items are actually um, coming out of this list and being added to this list over here, which we're, of course, visualizing in a repeating group. And as I love to remind people, repeating groups are not computation devices, they're display devices. Um, they are for visualizing lists. We could also visualize a list just as text, right? You, you'll often see me like draw a little thing on the canvas and um, I'll just spit out the result of something just so I can see what's going on, right? But this is, I mean, even though this interface is ugly, um, you'll see that it's functional. And so, for example, I let's say frozen shrimp is one of my favorite things. It's, it's not really. Um, if I click add to list, it will be put over into this list over here. And you note that it disappeared from this list. And then if I put it back, I'm like, oh, I don't really like frozen shrimp. Boop. It's actually back in this list now. Um, so, you know, the way we, that we would do that in, in bubble, right, is we, um, you know, when this button is clicked, we take that item and we do a plus item over to this other list. Um, and then we, if we're fancy, we can do what I did and we can actually remove it. We could minus item it from this, this master list of things, right? Um, so I guess we could look at how that's set up and then we could look out at how to floppyize it. And really the whole point is, um, I'm trying to explain to you the uh, RAM list, uh, and the RAM scaler and stuff like that and like why they're neat. And then maybe do some shift stuff on it. This is a very arbitrary example. I'm going to go to my tab that is my edit mode. Oh, and look at that. 
look at that. There's there's an anonymous user on my site looking at my Duffel example. Duffel is a nifty API for like travel booking. And so I'm glad to see that a user in the forum is benefiting from that. Anyway, um, let's just look at how these two repeating groups are set up right now. And then this is a little freestyle. So what I'm going to do is I, I will um, floppyize this. Um, let's see. So let's look at this repeating group. So this is RG favorite things. I guess I maybe should have called this like favorite things like master list. Now I'm not going to use like master servant, master slave terminology, but th this is, this is my master list. It's what we're doing is we're, we're doing a search for favorite things, items until 50. Okay. Uh, it, that's how it's originally populated. Uh, and then we're actually subtracting from it the current user's favorite things list. So to show you what happens, like if I click one of these buttons, the add to list button in my cell, right? And I start out at workflow. Well, what happens? Um, so in this scenario, we're to, to build up the user's list of favorite things. What we're going to do is we would perhaps, this could be some other object too, but we would perhaps make changes to the user, right? And so the user, I have a favorite things list on, right? And that's a, a field that's of type favorite things. And then I click the box. It is a list. Okay. And so what we do is we take the user's favorite things list and we add the item current cells favorite thing, right? This causes it to be put onto the user and that's a database transaction. And one of the things that floppy, you know, provides us with a benefit for, right? Is that we could temporarily, uh, maybe even permanently, save these things into local storage rather than doing a database transaction. We could let the, the user like mess around with select your favorite things. And then when they're done, we'll go and write that on the user, right? And in this way, we could have a solution that if I don't complete this step, but I come back later, well, all the work I did is still there, right? So that's what we're going to do with floppy. Boy, this is another long intro. We're like seven minutes into things and you're just like, get on with it. All right. So let's see, we make changes to the user, right? So we take that item that we clicked and we're going to put it on the user's list. Um, and then let's see, set states, user's favorite things list. Oh, I see what I'm doing. I also have a custom state. That's another way of, of doing things where I have a custom state that's temporarily holding user's favorite things list. Um, and so we're doing a plus item there. And then we're going to make a change to the master list, aha, where we minus item, we remove that favorite thing. Okay, and so let's go look at our other list. Now, given the setup here with the master list, the RG users fave things, right, would be just the data source is current users favorite things list. Okay, so I see what's happening here. So as I take an item out of this list by clicking add to list, it gets moved over here. And when that database transaction is done, this repeating group magically updates with that new list of values. Um, let's go look at it again, right? I touched some stuff. So now boob booble, bubble is going to make me reload my page. I think maybe we should start calling bubble booble. Um, yeah. So again, so I reloaded the page, right? And so this data is actually coming from the user. So this experience is persistent, um, but we're doing, we're doing these database transactions. So like if I want to now add canned chili to my list of favorite things, I click it and you'll see that, that very quickly what happened is that we did a database transaction. We added that to the user's favorite things list and now it shows up here. Uh, similarly, if I click the remove, let's look at how the remove workflow works. Uh, let's see when button remove from list is clicked. We're going to make changes to the user, right? We're going to take their favorite things list and we're going to remove current cells, favorite thing. And then, um, I, I have this custom state that's just echoing that it looks like. Um, and then I do an, another display operation on the repeating group to, to make it refresh. Right. And so what I've done here. It looks like, yeah, so I take RG favorite things, master list, lists of favorite things. That's the items displayed in that 
uh, RG. Oh, and then I add the item back to it that we had previously removed, right? So we plus item, current cell's favorite thing. All right, let's, let's, let's get into how we would floppyize this. Okay, so now what I just did off camera, movie magic, um, I, I cloned the page I was working with so that we can like totally mess up this page, but we could refer back to the old one if we need to, and God knows I'll probably need to, right? Um, boy, and my fan's really loud. Hold on. I'm just going to make that stop. Okay, as I was saying, um, I just cloned this page, and my, my fan just be damned. It's, you, you probably can't hear it because NVIDIA is filtering it out for me. Um, what we've done is we've created a clone of this page. So let's just go and just like blow away our old logic, right? You're like, oh my God, no, don't do that. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is the data source for this repeating group that, that holds my master favorite things list that I fetch from the database. I'm just going to like, I, let's just clear that whole expression. Because, of course, people are often doing this. They, they take a repeating group, right? Um, because this is quick and easy and, like, Bubble encourages you to do this this way, you know, they'll make the data source like the result of a search. But we don't have to hold the result of a search only in a repeating group. Like, we could hold it in some other element, like in a, a custom state that we populate on page load or in list shifter that gets populated when list shifter is initialized. Uh, or in floppy, in floppy's RAM list. So floppy has two custom states that are of the same type as we specify in the main floppy interface. Um, and what they're designed to do is one uh, holds um, a scalar value. When I say scalar, I mean a single value as opposed to a list, right, which is an array, uh, a list of values. So there's, there's two of these. This is the RAM scalar holds a scalar value and the RAM list holds a list value. Um, of course, the, the reason for this is that if we're going to be making a list and maybe saving it to local storage with floppy, we probably need to assemble our list somehow. And so that's what they're for. So these things are, you know, kind of tied to floppy and you can, you can use them to sort of instantly push values into local storage. Let's just get on with it. So we've removed that search from here in the master list. And so instead of doing our search there, let's get a floppy. I'll get a floppy. Here's a floppy. Oh, look, there's, there's some new, there, there's, there's some new, no, there's some new floppy elements that you don't have access to yet. Hmm. Interesting. Those will be coming in a future version. Let's get a floppy. We'll drop it on our page. And, um, he's a little small. I like, I like the floppy icon. So let's make it bigger just so we can see it while we're doing development, okay? And so we'll call this floppy master things, right? Maybe call it master favorite things, okay? Um, and let's see. Now, we're mostly going to use this guy for just his RAM list, and we're not actually going to write anything to local storage with this guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set his type and his type is going to be favorite things. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the, the, the key names and I'm just going to zero these out. I'm going to empty these out. Um, so that conceivably we, we could write to local storage, but we won't be like automatically writing these keys. So when you remove the, the scalar key name and the list key name, what you're, what you're basically telling floppy is like, look, there's no, there's no local storage key value pair that I'm going to automatically read and write. I'm just going to use you for your robust and luscious data processing capabilities. And floppy doesn't have a problem with that. Um, remember that, uh, one of the most important features of floppy is that we can change its editor color. So let's make this one. I'm going to make this one black, blackish, blackish is Knight Rider. Um, and so here's, here's our floppy. And what we're going to do with this floppy is we're going to use him to hold the master list. Okay. So again, we were doing a search for the first 50 favorite things in the database and we were storing them directly in the repeating group. In this case, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to say when this floppy becomes initialized, go and go and get that same search, but hold it in floppy's RAM list. And here's how I'm going to set that up. Let's go into our workflows and let's make a new workflow. Let's do, let's see, RAM list. Uh, da, ba, 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 ba. I want when floppy's initialized. Elements. Let's see. A floppy, a floppy, a floppy, a floppy. This is like, I hate this interface, by the way, right? Like the bubble interface for this, but here it is. When a floppy is initialized, we're going to say when floppy master favorite things becomes initialized. Let's make this, we'll make this dark, right? Because the black floppy will make it the brown workflow. This, that doesn't look very brown to me. Um, but you can see, okay, this is when floppy master favorite things becomes initialized. What we'll do is we will set the value of its RAM list. Now, you'll find the element actions for floppy and any other elements that you're using in your page under element actions, okay? And since there's a floppy here, I can see all of the floppy actions that I might do. Um, but I, I'm only interested in the ones that are uh, for the RAM list. So let's just take a look at that RAM list. I can type that here. Oh, look at all these things I can do. I can set the RAM list value of a floppy. I can add RAM list values to a floppy. What? I can remove RAM list values from a floppy. I can change values. I can clear the values. Like all, all these, like you can imagine what they do, right? Without even looking at the action. Oh, and then there's my shift functions. And we're going to talk about the shift functions uh, in this video as well. Um, so I can move an item. I can reverse the list. I can rotate the list. I can swap items in the list. Ooh, and I can cause the RAM list to be stored to floppy's key. Okay, that's all really cool and useful. In this case, I'm going to set the RAM list value of floppy. And that brings up the set RAM list value a floppy interface. Again, I say it's this floppy, floppy master favorite things. Uh, and so you see RTFM kids. So execute this action to update Floppy's RAM list value with or without also storing that value, by which I mean in local storage. Um, this action is synchronous. This is important. And when it completes, the updated RAM list value event is triggered. Um, synchronous versus asynchronous. One thing that people run into with a lot of different plugins, um, and this is not necessarily a bad thing, by the way, what they'll run into is that the, the actions in the plugin aren't designed to be synchronous. And so they'll say, okay, do something here, like in step one, and then do something in the next workflow step, work, workflow step two or workflow step N plus one. And what'll happen is if, the, if their code is asynchronous, what'll happen is when we get to this, this second step, like we can't, uh, we can't be assured that the values in the element plugin are updated or not. In floppy, I think it's all the actions. Yes, it's all the actions are in fact synchronous. And so you can do these things like in, in a chain and you can trust that the values have updated by the time you get to the next workflow step. It's, it's, um, this is something that's not implemented in every place in list shifter. And that's by design. In List Shifter, there are certain operations that are synchronous, and there are certain operations that are asynchronous. Um, in Floppy, basically everything is synchronous. We're, we're sacrificing speed for the usability of the bubble programmer. And if you don't know what I'm going on about, it's okay. Um, but just know that in Floppy, you can do all of Floppy's actions in a synchronous way. You can stack them one after the other, and the, the workflow doesn't like run ahead. To, to somewhere else. So you, and you don't have to do stupid stuff like put a wait step in, which is like not the right solution to asynchronous activities. Um, I've already gone on about this too much because we're, we're, all we're trying to do is set the value of floppy, right? So what we're going to do is when floppy master favorite things is initialized. Again, notice that I didn't do this on page load. Okay, if, if you try to do this on page load, there's a very high likelihood that floppy master favorite things is not ready to go yet. And if you try to do that, you'll get a warning in your console. Okay. Um, 
with action plugins, as I said in the, I think I said in my first set of videos, uh, what you want to do is you want to, you got to wait for them to be initialized. And so that's why floppy tells you that it's initialized. Now, the, the time between the page loaded event and when floppy is initialized is literally milliseconds, right? It's like single digit milliseconds, but if floppy's not ready to go, you can't send actions to it. So this is basically what we're doing is we're saying, look, when the page loads, it's not when the page loads, we're saying as soon as possible after the page loads, when this floppy becomes initialized, set the value of its RAM list, okay? And we're gonna set that RAM list value to be the same search I was doing before in the repeating group. So we're gonna do a search for favorite things. My head is in the way. Favorite things. Search for favorite things. Um, we're going to do, how do, do I have them sorted by created date? I think so. And then we're just going to get items to 50 because we don't want 16,000 items. That's going to be a very long search. Um, not really the search, actually the fetching of the values. So we'll say items until number 50. All right. And you note that again, I, I had parentheses there momentarily that's because I have the parentheses option on if you don't have that option turned on yet you should really do that that's under settings by the way look at all the learning and growing that we're doing here where is that general where is it is it under versions oh yeah so under versions um, expression parentheses this is a great thing to turn on I haven't seen any like bugs with this really like it may not work super reliably but it's not going to break anything and this will solve a lot of problems for you. It's, it's very useful for math. Anyway, you should do that. Let's go back to our workflow. So we're going to search for favorite things items until 50. Um, shall we just go back to our page? We've made some changes. So like what happens now? I wonder what happens now. Hmm. Waiting for Bubble to load our page on a personal plan. Bum, bum, bum. Okay. Uh, let's see here. That was unexpected because I loaded the wrong page. This is floppy demo three rather than the preview of our new page. Good Lord. Oh, the fun of it all. Let's hit preview. Let's go preview our page and see what happened. I think you know what's going to happen. There's not going to be anything in the master list just yet, right? If you're guessing that, then you guessed right. Yeah, here we go. So see, we've got nothing in our favorite things list. Now we have things in, in the user's personal favorite things list because we're reading about that from the database and that's still hooked up, but this is not hooked up. So let's go back over into our editor. And now, you know, we didn't have a data source for this repeating group. So now we're gonna make the, the source for this repeating group, floppy's RAM list. And it'll be this black floppy. Why is it gotta be black? Um, the master favorite things floppy, okay? So we will do data source is going to be floppy, floppy master favorite things, RAM list, RAM list values, I call it. Okay. Um, and when I talk about, like, I often refer to these things as outputs, um, in, in bubble terminology, they're actually called exposed states, but I find it easier to just kind of think about, right? Like an action or the main interface of a plugin has the gazintas, like the gozintas, right? And then the the exposed states have the goes outas. So I, I just call those outputs. All right. But when I say outputs, I mean exposed states and like don't get spun. Okay. So the data source for this is now going to be flappy, fl flappy. Let's start calling floppy, flappy, and bubble booble. Um, floppy master favorite things, RAM list values. Okay. And so then if we were to go back over, do I really need to do this? You know what's going to happen. Now this RG is going to populate. But you see the source for this list is no longer like a search. It's, it's the output from floppy's RAM list, which we set using this workflow. When floppy's initialized, set its RAM list. Okay, so that's basically the, the same as what we had before, right? Um, I think I was sorting these by some different criteria because I see, I see different items here. It doesn't matter. This is just an abstract example. Um, cause rich Corinthian leather was above that. Let's just change that. So if we wanted to change our search, 
let's do search for favorite things. We'll sort them by, oh, maybe it's created date descending is what I wanted. Created date descending. So the most recently created favorite things I want here first. Let's just, what does that look like? Live bubbling with Keith. There's going to be a song. We're going to sing a song. Ah, there we go. That's the list I wanted. Look at that. Okay. All right. So let's do that now for our, our, our favorite things. Instead of uh, looking directly at the user's list of favorite things, let, we're just going to disconnect that. And we're just going to like pretend that we never stored that data on the user at all. Okay. I mean, I know I just did, but you know, and I could go remove it, but I'm not going to do that. We're just bear with me. So let's go back in and like mangle our page some more. 25 minutes and we're barely even flopping. So again, just like I did before, where the data source uh, for the master repeating group I cleared, okay, I'm instead gonna feed this list of favorite things via floppy. And so let's make another floppy. Okay, and we will take a floppy and we'll put it here. And we'll make it bigger because he's so cute. So we can see him, okay. And for this guy, uh, I am actually eventually going to use him for local storage, but at the outset I won't. So I'm just gonna, we'll zero out his, his key names, right? And then we're gonna make his type. And I, I'm calling him a him, but maybe it's a her. I mean, what's the gender of this floppy? Maybe there should be a pull down for, there should be, <gasps> there should be an editor option for gender. It wouldn't affect anything, but it would just be there and you could like switch it. Okay. And maybe if it's like a female floppy, it would, I don't know, be cooler. Um, type of values, favorite thing. So we're going to store favorite things in this floppy and that includes in its RAM list and it's RAM scaler. Cool. Right. And so we'll call this floppy user favorite fave things. I like to abbreviate favorite to fave. So this will be floppy user fave things. And I don't know, what color should it be? What's your favorite color? Of all the editor icon colors, what's your favorite? I borrowed these from List Shifter, the names of them. Let's make a hot pink. I like the hot pink one the best. All right, so now we've got this guy. And just like we did with our master list, I'm going to go back into my workflows. I'm going to make a new one. I will add a new event and I will say when a floppy is initialized. I could have copied. I guess I could have copied this, right? I could have copied this and then changed it, but I just did it from scratch. So when a floppy is initialized, this will be floppy user favorite things. Um, yeah, we don't really need to do anything just yet. We'll just assume that it's blank. We'll eventually probably use this. Let's make it, let's see, it's, he was pink, so we'll make his workflow red. Is that closest to pink? Yeah, maybe. All right, back over in design mode. Uh, let's do, 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 we're going to go to this repeating group. Let's see. We already removed this data source. Now what we'll do is, oh, really? I'm getting alerts. Go away. Uh, we're going to make this data source again, floppy, floppy user faves things, RAM list values. It's right down here. It, before I think I did this, I typed RAM just to quickly get to it. Well, the RAM list values. Okay. And so let's look at our page. And now what we'll see, right? I think we know what we're going to see here. We will see our list of master favorite things populate and the user's favorite thing list will be empty. Yes, it is empty. And now I have to hook up the logic. Like what is supposed to happen when we add to list? Now, the way it's set up right now, if I click add to list, this is going to write the user's, um, the user's favorite thing list, but I don't want to do that. I just want to do this purely in the page. That'd be cool, right? So there's database reads, but we're not doing database writes. Maybe we'll talk about that more. All right, so let's see here. Add to list. What happens when add to list is clicked? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to delete this whole workflow. And you're like, oh my God, what are you doing? Well, I'm just, I'm deleting the whole thing. So now it does nothing when we click add to list. But when we click add to list, now what we want to do is we want to take the clicked item and we want to add it to floppy's RAM list, right? And then we'll remove it from floppy masters list. So let's do that. Let's do 
let's see, floppy RAM list, I can get there like this. Instead of doing set RAM scalar value, I could just do add RAM list values. So let's let's look at that. So we'll look at add RAM list value. So add RAM list value. This is like the equivalent of plus item in bubble, but whoa, there's like so many more options. There's so many more things we can do um, that we don't have control over when we're using just vanilla bubble. So I'm going to say from element floppy user fav things, I want to add a single value. You can see that I can, I can add one value. I can add list of values. I can add empty values. This is an advanced feature that I'll have to talk about probably in another video because this has gone on for a really long time already. Um, and then look at this. We can, just like in bubble, we can add those items when we do a plus list in bubble, we can add them at the end of the list right? But we can't add them anyplace else. Um, we can add with floppy, we can add those items to the start of the list or at some specified index number, like the position of the element in the list, which is pretty cool. Let's leave it at end of list right now. Um, and then we've got additional options. Just like in list shifter, floppy's RAM list can contain duplicate values. So, you know, a lot of times, especially when we're dealing with things, like Bubble will only allow like a, a single unique thing in it. And you rarely see multiples of stuff. But floppy is cool. So like if we were using integers, right, we just have numbers. Like you've probably been frustrated in the past. It's like, I'm just trying to add a second number five to my list, but Bubble won't let me do it because it's a duplicate value. But these are integers, not things. Why should it do that? Well, because it's Bubble and it does that but using um, floppy's ram list we could get around that um there's also an option here for store new value so if we were writing to local storage or session storage um we we could immediately update the storage value so that that's what store new value is for anyway all these things are documented again so like i would go read about them at least the first time i use them um, but in this case, like we know what we want to do. We just want to take a single value and we want to add it to the floppy user fave things list. So we'll say add single value and we'll say current cells, favorite thing, right? That's the favorite thing I clicked the button for. And then we want to remove that from the master list. So let's do that. So now we'll do, um, let's just, let's search Ram list. And so we've got, ah, remove RAM list values. All right, so we will remove from the master favorite things RAM list, we will remove the same item, right? Current self's favorite thing. Whoops, no, sorry, that was an index, but what did I do? Remove single value. So remove has a slightly different interface. So we can remove items by index, Crosley, like, what if you rehearsed? Do you think if you rehearsed, these videos would be better? No, they wouldn't be. Um, so we can remove items by index, or we can remove them by their value. Uh, and in this case, um, we uh, we just want to remove it by value. So what this essentially does is it says, hey, find this thing in the list and take it out. So we'll remove the single value, current cell's favorite thing. And now, even though I was just talking about the fact that you know, uh, floppy's RAM list can let you hold multiple values. In this case, I actually don't want my RAM list to can, to uh, allow uh, multiple values. So what I probably want to do is like go back over here to my to my add. And what I'm going to say is I'm just going to say, look, if this has been added, it won't be possible because of the interface that we're using. But I'm just going to say just for safety, like, look, don't allow duplicates. If we try to add the same item, we won't do it again. So we'll say prohibit duplicates. Yes. Um, and But we don't need to do the same thing for the master list because, well, actually we do. Well, we'll get there. Um, let's see. So add. Should we make this a different color for add? Add to list. Maybe we'll make these purple. Purple is add. Okay. So let's see. We add to the favorite things. We remove the item from the master favorite things. Let's just give it a go, see what happens. I gotta reload, 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 reload my page. Waiting for bubble to update my page. Okay, uh, I like rich Corinthian leather. And so let's see, 
did that update? Why didn't that update? It didn't update because I probably floppy user fave things ram list values. This is favorite thing ram list values. Why did it not show me the thing? Ooh, there was a little bug in my dedupe function. So uh, go get yourselves um, floppy 1.6.3 which fixes my little boo-boo. Now that I've fixed my own stupid code, um, if we reload the page, let's see what happens here when we click our little buttons. When we add to the list, let's see, we'll add rich Corinthian leather. Aha, it shows up in my uh, user's favorite things list, which again, remember, is being fed by the, the hot pink floppies RAM list. And then we'll add some pork juice. Okay, cool, that's working as expected. Uh, another reason I do these videos is that I will occasionally discover little bugs for, you know, things that should just work, but uh, weren't working exactly right. Okay, back over into design mode. We changed all of our, whoops, got some like stupid stuff going on here. Clear that expression. Okay. Here's your favorite things list. Hooray. I want it to be like that. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We blew away all of our logic. No, we didn't remove that. So let's remove our logic from the uh, remove from list stuff, right? Because we still have this hooked up to, to be like the old fashioned way, like the bubble way, um, where we're going to write things to the user. So I go back over in here and in remove, I'm just going to blow away like all of this logic where we were. Oops. Come on, delete, delete, delete. Why is my delete not showing up? Delete. Delete. Do I need to refresh my editor? Maybe. Let's refresh our editor real quick. Watch my head dance around. Okay. So when remove, where's remove? Here it is. Remove. All right. So now we're working on remove. Let's make this one red as well. No, it's purple. We picked for these, right? Okay. So add the list is purple. Remove from list is purple. Now, when we want to remove from this list over here, the user's favorite things list, what we will do is we will do a floppy RAM list. We will remove RAM list values of floppy and we will remove them from floppy user favorite things. And let's see if I can do this smoother this time, eh? We're going to remove a single value, right? That's going to be current cell's favorite thing. That's the one we just clicked on. We'll remove it. Ooh, and now let's add it back into the master RAM list, right? So this is kind of the opposite of the, the previous workflow we just set up. We will say RAM list, RAM list. We'll say add RAM list values of floppy, but in this case, we're going to add that value back into the floppy master favorite things list. And we're going to add a single value and that will be current cells favorite thing. Did I do this right? Chances are reasonable. Let's reload our preview. Can't decide where I want my head, over here or over here? Eh, maybe over here. Okay. So let's see, does this work? I can add to the user list. Yep, I can remove from the user list. Oh, look at that. Let's see, hot sauce. Does it, does it come back on here? It didn't add back. What did I do wrong? Well, I didn't do it wrong, but you see that my, my master list here, it's, it got added to the end. So what I really want to do is I, I wanted to, I wanted to sort this list in a different way. Um, I didn't want to sort the RAM list value. I want to sort it on display. So let's fix that real quick. Let's go over here to our design mode. We will do, let's see, instead of the simply being floppy master's favorite things, RAM list values, let's also put a sort on this. So again, you see the RAM list, might be in one order, but we could display it in a different order, like using using the sort um, operator. So let's do that because we kind of always want this to appear sorted by creation date descending. So we'll just put that on here. Let's do sort 
sorted. Sorted by creation date, descending, yes. All right, does that give us a better experience? Aren't you glad you tuned into this exciting video? Yes, you are. All right, so let's see. Rich Corinthian leather. Now, if I remove it from here, it should go to back to its original position. Boop. Oh, it did. Hurrah. All right. So there you go. See, that's the, the power of sort. But remember, see, like sort is just a, it's just a visualization thing, right? Like I didn't, I, I could have resorted Floppy's Ram list, but I don't need to. So let's, let, let's see, let's add our pork juice. And then if I remove it, does it go back into here where it was? Yes, it certainly does. All right, so that's cool. All right, so now you see that I have, I think, have completely floppyized this operation. So we're no longer writing to the user's list of favorite things. We're just holding these things in memory using floppy's RAM list. Now, you might have noticed that as I was uh, dorking around there, when we reload the page, like I'm doing right now, all of our work is lost, right? It's these The things in the, the user's favorite things list are no longer here because they're only being held in memory. So let's go use floppy to save them to, I think, local storage. We might do, there's a new option too, since we, um, since I launched floppy, uh, that you might have noticed, in addition to local storage and session storage, we can also now store it to IndexedDB. Um, IndexedDB is a different part of your storage environment um, that actually is like a full-fledged database. Um, and the feature that we've added here uses a library called Local Forage, which basically takes IndexedDB and makes it just like an instance of, of local storage. So you can create different data stores inside of IndexedDB and they can like hold their own items. So like that might be cool. So just to explain that a little bit more, if I said, okay, this floppy is going to write to local storage, then we're just sort of done. Like, let's, let's do the example. So let's say that I wanted to make this now associated with, um, you know, it's users favorite things. So I could say that the list key here is, you know, users favorite things. Let's call them fave things. I could say that the key name is, is users fave things. Actually, let's, let's not have the apostrophe. Apostrophes are kind of bad. Let's say user fave things, right? Um, and so what we would do, let's turn off. Yeah, we want to do automatic retrieval. We're going to write them to user fave things. We could like, we're not going to use the scalar value, I think, in this case, but we could also have a scalar that's like user fave thing, which is like just one, or users fave things, which is a list. Um, what else do I want to do there? Let's just do that, and then. Okay, so now that we've configured local storage for this, let's go back, oops, let's go back into our, I keep, you know, I gotta, I keep clicking into this page. All right, <laughs> goofing off. Uh, all right, so what we could do, right, let's say we wanna make that user's um, RAM list persist by writing it to local storage whenever we have a change. This becomes really easy because we can just go here to our um, add to list and remove from list actions. Let's do add first. So we'll say add RAM list value is a floppy user fave things. See, it's nice that I made that pink because now I, look at that, look at that. It, like it totally syncs up with like this color. That's so cool. Um, and then I know which floppy I'm dealing with, right? So when we add the list of values, we're going to do store new value. And so what this will do is this will cause floppy's RAM list to get written to that key that we specified here. All right, here, this key, users fave things, right? Let's watch and see if that happens. Uh, actually, before we demonstrate that, because reloading the page is like so completely annoying, let's um, also look at, wrong page, let's also look at, the remove action. So when we remove the list, a list value from 
floppy user fave things, right? We're removing that single value that we click on. Um, what we will do is we will do also do store new value so that local storage will magically update for us as we do this. Let's let's try it and see if I didn't F it up. Do you find these useful? I do. Um, all right, so let's look in. We're going to hit F12 so we can see what's going on in our application. Again, F12 opens the console. And let's go over here to our application. And let's look in our local storage area. And you'll see that we do not yet have uh, that user's fav list thing. But let's see what happens when we add an item. Oh, look at that. Magically, user's fave things populated with a one item list. And this unique ID represents rich Corinthian leather, believe it or not. If I remove it, does it go away? Oh, it sure does. Look at that. Um, one thing you just might have seen there. So you noticed that as soon as the user's fave things key became empty, like it went to zero items, we actually removed the key. Now, this is not necessarily something that you would do in code, um, but the way that the local storage interface works, it's like if a key doesn't have a value, um, if, if, if the key has a null value, it's the same thing as if the key didn't exist. And so to keep your local storage clean, what I do is like if the value becomes empty or if we have a list and the list goes away or the number of items goes to zero, I just take that key away. But what will happen is like when I add new items, like let's add canary wings, it'll come back. OK, so this is just kind of a this is just kind of a, a, a cleanliness um, optimization, if you will. You don't really need to worry about it. It just happens automatically. And now you see each time that I add uh, a new item to your the user's favorite things list, we're saving that over here in user favorite things. So if I were to reload this page, there's a lot of reloading lot of reloading. If I reload this page, we'll just wait for that to happen. Oh, there's that bug again. Not one of my bugs, a bubble bug. Um, when we reload this, we should see, oh, what happened? Wait a minute, we wanted to restore this list, right? Well, let's just, um, let's see, we didn't change the RAM list now, did we? So let's just go and edit that. So let's go back in here and we'll say when uh -huh. See, I told you I was going to use this. When floppy user fave things is initialized, what we're going to do is we're going to take that stored value and we're going to push it back up into the RAM list. Now we could have been, if we had designed this from scratch, we could have been using like floppy's um, list storage, you know, where we're just, we're looking at the list storage value. We could have done that, but I wanted to do, do this with the RAM list value. So when the page refreshes, what I'm going to have to do is like repopulate the RAM list because that doesn't happen automatically. So floppy user fave things initialized. We're going to do what? We're going to set the RAM list. We're going to set the RAM list value to be, let's see, user favorite things. We'll set the RAM list value to be this floppies. You can, a, a floppy can reference its own outputs, by the way. We're going to use its list values storage. So the floppy sucks the things in before initialization. And then when it's initialized, we will take those values and we'll put them in the RAM list so that we can play around with that. So let's reload. Woo. There we go. And so now you see the state of my RAM list is restored. Um, like I say, I could have also done something like this, where instead of feeding this list from the fave things RAM list values, I could have fed this from floppy user fave things list values storage, which does stay in sync across changes. It is what I'm saying true. Could we have, could we have just looked at storage? We could, that would be like when you're looking at bubbles database, let's see, remove from list. Yeah, that all works. Let's see. Add a hot sauce back in. Yeah, that works. But it's better to do it this way. We really just want this to be the 
driven by the RAM list values. I hope what I was saying like made sense there. It may or may not have to you. You can watch that again and you can think about it. But we just want to use the RAM list and then use, we're using storage for storage and RAM for RAM, you know? Like that's kind of the right way to do things. Um, okay, so cool. Uh, we did that with local storage. Now let's show the, the index DB option, which is kind of interesting. It's not, it's not really that different. We're just using a different technology. And the difference between local storage is your browser allocates, depends on the, the device and the version of the browser, right? But it allocates roughly five megabytes um, storage that you can use. Index DB is much bigger. Um, depending again on the browser and the version and the yada yada and the policies of your operating system, it could even, it could even let you use like half of the user's disk, like don't abuse that, but it has some other, um, interesting properties as well, because it, like I say, uh, each data store that we make in instance DB, uh, is kind of like its own. A local storage area. So we can kind of partition things. We can say, oh, these are keys and values that I, that I associate with the user. And then I might have a section that's like, oh, these are keys and values that are associated with my app, or these are keys and values that are associated just with a certain page. And so we have these different namespaces to work with, and they're, they're kind of independent, which is sort of cool. We'll show that um, when I come back from a quick break. Uh, you won't see the break because I'm just hitting pause. Okay, so that was a nice little break. Um, I refreshed my cocktail. I hope you did too. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna set this up to use index DB using the local forage library instead of local storage. Um, but first, it occurred to me that uh, let me open my console. It occurred to me that I'm I'm done now with this users fave things list, right? And while I could just go here and I could right click and I could delete this key, um, you know, to simulate the situation that a user never actually visited this page, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I might want to get rid of it um, because, I'm, you know, it's just going to be lying around now. Uh, I just wanted to show you that instead of just deleting it here, there, of course, Floppy lets you uh, clear and remove keys. So we could also do this in the runtime. Um, again, we would do this on, you know, some sort of application, or, sorry, some sort of event in our app. Like, let's say we were using Floppy to, you know, store a bunch of information that's related to a user's onboarding, but now they're onboarded, and then at the end of that process, we're going to clear the list. We're going to clear, remove the key. Um, we're going to do that artificially right now. So let's make a button for ourselves, and we'll, we'll clear that key that this Floppy was managing, okay? So let's do a button. I'll take a button, I'm gonna put it right over here. And this is going to be remove, remove floppy user fave things key, right? Start edit workflow. And then when that button is pressed, let's do, let's make him orange. When that button is cracked, press let's say I think it's remove yep remove keys a floppy so we'll execute remove keys a floppy and then we say what floppy floppy user fave things um, we're not using the scalar key in this case right because I didn't set that up um, but we can leave this set to yes so we'll remove and the scalar key that this is managing and then we'll remove the list key we can also uh, again, this is one of those RTFM things, like like read the read the documentation. But basically, if we leave this explicit key name field empty, um, what that means is do the default, remove the key that this flop the keys that this floppy is managing. Okay, um, but if we had other keys that we wanted to delete, actually any floppy can delete any other floppy's keys as long as it knows the name, uh, which is kind of useful because who well, haven't shown this yet, but also a floppy can write any type of key if it wants to. Um, it just can't read them back in because it could only read it, it, the keys of its own type with their own names. Um, there's a lot in this plugin, okay? It's pretty cool, it's crazy. But anyway, doing this, remove keys, will just remove those keys. Let's try that out. We will go back over into our preview. And again, you see, so here's my user's favorite things. That list is there. Bum, 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 bum. Reloading our page.
Okay, and so now we're back. See, and we've, we've read that list back in. Um, and of course, this will still work, like for now, but where'd my clear keys button go? Oh, responsive design, how does it work? Okay, the button's all the way down here. I should have put it to the side, but whatever. You know, when I do these videos, I'm just like, I'm playing fast and loose with the interface. You, obviously, you wouldn't do this in a normal app. But when I click this button, what's going to happen, right, is that this should disappear. Remove floppy user favorite things key. Boop. Whoa, look at that. It's gone from the list. And then, of course, because my application, my page here, is completely responsive to this stuff, um, this should update if I also clear the RAM list, right? So let's clear the RAM list. In addition to removing the keys, we should clear the RAM list. Might have been a, a neat option to add here, but th they're really different things. So we'll do this. We will clear. We'll clear RAM list values of floppy element. Love user favorite things. Oh, ha ha ha. Here's where I put that option. Look, remove the list key. Look at that. I should have done this. Okay, let's nuke this. Anyway, I showed you how you can remove a key explicitly, right? But actually, we could clear the RAM values, and by clearing the RAM values, we could remove the key. Because as I just explained, the rule is if a key goes to null, if a, a key goes empty, like a list becomes zero or the or a scalar becomes null, then we'll just magically remove the key. Of course I built it into this option. Read the freaking manual, Keith. Let's try that. We'll reload our page. It's fun, all the different options, right? It's pretty neat. Uh, okay, so see, the, so the user is like doing this list, okay? And so now user's fave things is over in storage, and that's being being read and written it's being updated when we want it to and now i'm done with this key and so i'm just going to zero out the ram list and also cause the key to disappear drum roll please remove floppy user ft key boop gone and when i scroll back up to my ugly page ah ha 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 everything's gone from memory too fantastic and we're getting on into an hour make it quick keith um, okay, so let's just let's just uh, update that user RAM floppy to uh, use IndexedDB instead. So I'm going to go back into design mode, right, and I'm going to pick on my pink floppy here, user fave things. You'll see that I was using local storage, and that that's we're not going to use it anymore. So that's why we cleared our key, and I showed you how to do that. Um, what we're going to do now is here's this new option. This was introduced after I did the, the intro videos for this. Index DB parentheses local forage is really just like using um, local storage. You'll see that my floppy icon changed. So instead of saying loc, now it says IDB. That stands for index DB. And so you can tell at a glance that it is going to be writing to index DB storage. Um, we're going to set everything else the same, uh, but we do have some other options. And again, this is an RTFM thing. If you read here, it'll tell you um, that there's some extra options down here when we're using IndexedDB local forage. If I go down, let's see, where are you? Oh, here we go. Advanced IndexedDB local forage options. So when we're using IndexedDB, we can... Uh, select a database name and the database is sort of a, like this master object okay and then we can specify a data store name whether or not you feel fill out these fields we'll still use a default and so the default so if we select indexdb local forage you can set the name of the database to be used if left empty this defaults to database name local forage maybe we'll just leave this at the default um, and then for the data store name if storage type is IndexedDB local forage, you can supply the name of a specific data store to use. This value must be alphanumeric with underscores. Um, any non-alphanumeric characters will be converted to underscores by local forage internally. If left empty, the default is key value pairs. Um, so let's see, I might be happy with my database name being local forage. That's easy, but I think for the data store name, right, because this is a value that relates to the user, I might call this this data store user. 
So I'm going to label this as user, and let's just uh, see what happens. Let's go back in here, and we're going to reload our page, and I'm going to get my console back open. All right, and so now, so I'm over here in my application pane. Okay, I'm looking at local storage, and what you'll see is that now if I add some items to the user's favorite things list, nothing is showing up here in local storage because now we're sending them to a different place. And this is called indexed DB. And so here's your indexed DB. It's under the storage tab. And I'm going to twirl this down. Oh, and look at this. I have a I have some databases in here that because I've been playing around with databases and other stuff. Um, but we what happened is we just created this database called local forage. And inside of local forage, we will see the data store that we just defined called user. And so now this key, whoops, I didn't mean to like drag the page down, Let's make this a little bigger. And so now instead of being in local storage, this, the, our, our key users fave things is over here in the user section of index DB under the database named local forage. Okay. So basically this is exactly like the local storage scenario, except that now I have these different data stores that I could use. So, I mean, I don't know, like maybe we should change the other floppy to use this and we could write it in a different data store. So we'll use the same database, but maybe we'll save these values for the master list. Should we want to, we don't, we don't really need to, um, but maybe we should store them, you know, in local forage too, just, just to, um, just, you know, to kind of drive the point home. So let's go to this guy and here's our favorite things. So instead of him writing to local storage, let's just say he's going to write to index DB and he's, and he wasn't, he wasn't writing in the first place, but you know, it's an artificial example. Okay. So now we're going to write to local forage. Um, let's see, we're going on here, our database name, we'll leave this at the default so that it's stored under a database called local forage. And then let's make this like data store name. Like, I don't know, these are like, these are like, maybe these are onboarding values or something. I don't know. And so now what I'm going to do is I'll write this guy's list into this data store called onboarding. Um, and let's see, let's give it a key because we weren't doing that before. So list key name, what's this going to be like? This is like master fave things list, I guess. Things list. Okay. And uh, what else do we want to do there? Mm, maybe what we'll do is like when it changes, maybe we'll just, maybe we'll just write it to storage, right? So um, I keep clicking the wrong thing. Let's see. So let's see. When master favorite things is initialized, set RAM list right? So maybe let's store this. So when we go and fetch the list, maybe we'll like write it to local storage just for yucks. Um, it's not really a good idea to do this because it's very artificial. Uh, then let's see, and when add to list, when we change the RAM list values, we can also just store the new values and then we'll remove values from it. We could also store them. And what we'll see is we might be able to see them change. Right, so let's reload our page. And so now, even though I'm not leveraging the functionality that the master list is stored in index DB, I, I'm still gonna write it. So let's do this. Uh, we just loaded our page, right? And oh, look at that. Now under local forage database, we now have a new data store called onboarding. Oh, and look at that. There is in fact a value for the master fave things list that has 50 values in it. Um, one final thing I guess I should point out in this video, that I know this has gone really long, and I thank you for your patience. We didn't actually even get to the list, we, we got to the list building functions, but we didn't get to the shift functions, which I'm gonna do in the next one. Now that you understand what I was building here and what I'm effing around with, um, we can go and do some fun things with the shift functions. Uh, but now you understand the RAM list. Um, I didn't talk about the scaler, like the RAM scaler, because that's just a single value. So it doesn't have all these funky actions with it, right? It does the same trick where like, if you change the value, you can store it. Um, but you know, there's, there's no like, there's no like, you know, set 
list and like add something to the list, remove something to the list, because it's not a list, it's just a single value. So all you can do with that is set it. You can set the scalar or you, and you can, you know, automatically save it to storage, etc. Um, so there we go. There's a little picture of uh, index DB. And I'm sure your mind is now reeling with various possibilities. And what I'm going to do is stop this video and um, we'll pick up some more stuff with actual shifting of items and such uh, in our next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for using Floppy. I really appreciate all you early adopters who have just uh, dove right in uh, and got into it. Hopefully this, uh, hopefully you've learned some like general bubble stuff and you've um, had a little bit of fun. Okay, bye for now.